Ah, go! Block it, block it, block it! Throw it, throw it, stop, throw it! Just block it! Ah! Today I'm going to show you how to add wall collision to your monster. We've also got other improvements we're going to add in. Because if I know how to make it better, then you should know how to make it better. Now let's say you don't want to learn these circuits, you just want these new follow circuits as an invention. We'll introduce in the RCL follow system to now with wall collision. Now it's all contained in this little circuit board. There's a couple of options you can mess with here, but it should be locked so you can't get into the circuit board. But if you watch this whole tutorial and you want to see just an example of the circuits inside, I'll show you where you can find those later. We are going to start this tutorial with one of my free pre-made follow inventions, the RCL underscore follow underscore V5.3. This is the last one that we made in my other following monster tutorial videos. I will leave those two videos below if you guys want to build it from scratch. All right, so this is our old invention. There's been some new chips added, which will simplify our circuits. The main new chip that we're using is the get closest chip. But first we got to delete like half the chips over there. So let's start, let's see, trigger volume, delete that. We can delete local player, delete first with tag. We have it over here, distance. Uh, delete all the variables. Delete all this up here, variables. We don't need this comment. Let's see, all these variables down here. Delete that, delete the distance chip. There's one more over here that we have to get. You. All right, and this is what we're left with. And now we're gonna grab that new chip, the get closest. And we're gonna put it over here next to the rec room object, get first with tag. So we know that this result here is gonna be the player that is closest to the monster. And we know that this get position is gonna always be the position of that player. So let's go ahead and connect that up. The origin is going to be what point in space are we measuring the closest thing to? So for us, that's gonna be the monster's position. And the targets are a list of things that you want this chip to measure that is the closest. So for us, we'll use a get all players. Go ahead and hook that up. Oh, all right, hang on, we're gonna unhook him. So yeah, that replaces all of those circuits over there that we're measuring like distance and stuff. It's now just, just this, that's it. Now I can guess that some of you guys are gonna ask, how do I make it follow only certain people? Now you can either give players that are like in play, the one that you want it to chase, you could give them a role or give them a tag and then have that list of players go in instead of all the players. Okay, so the next improvement has to do with networking. Usually we run a 30 hertz receiver through it if local player is authority or is room authority chip. And this makes sure that it only runs on one person's system, but we're gonna make it a little bit better. First delete these, then we're gonna use a rec room object get authority, and then we'll get a if player is local. The rec room object we're trying to get the authority of is our monster over here, so that's the object. It's gonna result in a player. We're gonna hook up that resulting player to the player here on the if player is local chip. Then we can hook up our 30 hertz and our is local over here to set transform. It's gonna start chasing me. Yep, hold on, disconnect, disconnect. So now it's running on the system of the person who actually has authority of that object. It just makes it run smoother. Okay, now it's time for wall collision. Here we go. Okay, so conceptually what we're doing is we're getting a raycast chip. Although by the end, we're not gonna be using the raycast chip. So just in case you don't know, a raycast is like an invisible line that we're gonna be shooting out of our monster's face. And what we're gonna do is make it so that when this invisible line hits a wall, we're gonna switch the vectors that are being added to it. Right now, the vector that is being added to it is one that points directly at the closest player. But when it hits a wall, we're gonna have it switch to a vector that is perpendicular to where it hit the wall. But wait, there's more. You need to know that your pivot point placement is going to matter a whole lot here. So make sure that your pivot point is positioned correctly on your monster. That blue line on your pivot point needs to be pointing out of the face of your monster. Maybe even the whole white square can be out of your monster. To start off, we're gonna make a wall check. And for that, we need an if chip. Then go ahead and disconnect the set transform. And we're gonna hook it up to the else bit of the new if chip. And we'll hook up the is local to the input. Then we're gonna need a new set transform for when it's then, so just clone that, and we can go ahead and hook it to the then. All right, so the rest of it is just filling out these chips. So our target is still the same as this target. It's gonna be our monster. 
And the rotation here is also the exact same as the rotation down here, pointing to its current target, which would be this subtract chip right here, if I can get it. it hook up, hook up, hook up. Did it hook up? It did, it hooked up, it hooked up. Okay, now for our position, if you've seen my previous videos, then you know whenever this monster is following somebody, it's adding a vector to its current position that's just like a very small chunk of that larger vector. So essentially we have to do the same thing here, but we're taking the chunk from a different vector. We're taking it from a sideways vector on the wall. All right, so let's get an add chip. I'm just gonna clone this one. And we know that ultimately we are going to add a vector to our monster's current position. And we know that this result is gonna be our new position we're going to. And then grab your Raycast chip and bring it down here. All right, so you see this surface normal. This is the vector that we're gonna replace our following player vector with and take a chunk out of it. But we don't wanna add this entire vector to it because then it'll just jump around. We wanna add a small little chunk and the way that we do that is just like up here, we multiply it by a tiny number. So you can either grab these chips or clone them. I'm just gonna clone them. Then we're gonna hook them up much the same way. Bring surface normal there, multiply it by our small vector here. In experimenting, I know that the 0 0.03 whatever is too small. So we're actually gonna change it to 0.1. And I leave the Y coordinate zero just because I don't want it to add any up or down. I just want it to go sideways around walls. Then we're gonna add that tiny chunk to our current position. So now we need to mess with the Raycast a little bit. Let's configure it and make it ignore players. Then we're gonna hook up the hit bool down here to the bool in our if chip. And now we just need to fill out the inputs on this chip. So our start position needs to be the same position that our monster is currently in. The direction is always gonna be pointing toward the player. So that is our subtract chip right here. Go ahead and subtract. Sub, sub, subtract, there we go. Now the max distance for us, the max distance is gonna be how far away from the wall do you want the monster to be before it starts detecting it. I found a good number was 0.25, but you play around with this number and see you know, what works for you. So if you remember at the beginning of the video, I said that we weren't going to use a Raycast at the end. So the problem we have here is that he follows the wall and he avoids it, but he still clips around corners a lot. So to fix this, we are going to switch out our ray cast for something called a sphere cast. And as you can see, it's very, very similar to a ray cast. Instead of pointing out a single line in whatever direction you tell it, it's pointing an entire sphere in that direction. So instead of having one point and does it does that one point hit a wall, it's gonna be does any point on this whole sphere hit a wall. All we're gonna do is delete our ray cast and hook up everything else that was hooked up here back into the sphere cast. And we have a max distance again, I'll do 0.25. Now the radius is gonna be how big of a circle or a sphere do you want shooting out in front of your, your monster? The best number I found for berry size is 0.75. I think that number is gonna be have to be bigger if your monster's bigger. But with that change, let's go see how he does around corners. This is not a perfect solution, but it's working to get around walls. So for those of you that are a little more hands-on or that need a more like in-depth look at the circuits, I have a room set up, it's called use code rcl1 many people have been there it's just filled with random things but i will have a door in there that leads to a wall collision example circuit so you go in there take pictures experiment it's there for you to pick at it and learn like subscribe all that good stuff use code rcl1 and i will see you next week rcl man out